Hello, and welcome to the Invent with Scratch screencast. I'm Al Swigert, and in this episode, we're going to create this flying space rainbow thing. I don't even really know what this is, but it's really cool to look at. So we're going to just go into this. I'm going to click on the red stop sign button and start up a new editor by hitting create. Now the first thing that we're going to do is get rid of this cat sprite. We won't be needing it. So right click on the cat sprite and select delete. Next we're going to have to draw our own sprite. So click on the paintbrush button that says paint new sprite. And you're going to have to pay very close attention because this is a very complicated sprite that we're going to draw. The first step is to draw a single dot on the crosshairs. And that's it, we're done. Okay, now for the code for this sprite, it's also really simple. We're going to go to the brown events section and grab this when green flag clicked button uh, block. What we want this uh, little dot sprite to do is just point itself in a random direction. In fact, let's go ahead and open up the info panel for this and rename it from sprite one to dot one. And in the dark blue motion category, we can grab this point in direction block all of these settings right here will just have it point in one direction. We want it to point in any random direction. So we're going to go to the green operator section and grab this pick random 1 to 10 bubble. And the range that the random number should be is anywhere between negative 180 and 180. And the reason we're setting it to that is because if you look in the info panel, the direction ranges anywhere from negative 180 uh, and then it starts increasing as it goes up to the top and where it reaches zero and it keeps getting bigger and bigger until it's finally at 180. So we're going to have one of those numbers somewhere between negative 180 and 180 as where this dot is pointing to. That way we can use the move 10 steps block to move it forward in that direction. But first we're going to go to the orange control section and grab this forever loop because we want this dot to be moving in some random direction and then also when it hits the edge of the stage, we want it to bounce. So both of those blocks are in the dark blue motion category. The first one is here in move 10 steps. And then towards the bottom, we're going to have if on edge bounce. So let's test this out. Click on the green flag and we'll see this code in action. Wow, that is really boring. But hey, it's working though. That's good. So the next thing that we're going to do is close the info panel. Now, to make it even more exciting than one dot, we're going to have two dots. So right click on the dot one sprite and select duplicate. Hey, yeah, two dots. That's twice as exciting as the previous really boring program. And what's great is because we have, uh, when we duplicated that dot sprite, it also duplicated the code here. So we don't have to redo that. Now we're going to need a third dot. And the third dot is basically going to do all the drawing. There's this pen category that has all these tools and basically you, in Scratch you can have a, a block that says pen down and then whenever the sprite moves around it'll start drawing a line behind it until it reaches this pen up block. So first we're going to need a sort of a drawing dot sprite. So let's hit duplicate on dot one or dot two and just rename this to drawing dot. So Let's get rid of this code right here. We don't need this. Our drawing dot's going to do something a little bit different than dot one and dot two. We're going to have this when green flag clicked block, and then we're also going to need a forever loop underneath that. So grab one from the orange control section here. And what we want this to do is first put the pen down. So go to that turquoise pen section again and grab pen down. This means as the whenever the sprite starts moving, start drawing a line. You can think of it as sort of if you were told to just put up, if you were holding a marker and you were told to put it down on the ground and every time you started moving around you'd start drawing a line wherever you go. So that's what pen down means. And what we want this to do right now is if we click on motion, first we want it to go to the first dot, dot one. So grab this go to mouse pointer block. We're going to click on the black triangle to change mouse pointer to dot one. And then Oops, I got that confused. We actually want it to go to dot one first, then put the pen down. And then after that, we're going to have it go to dot two. So it goes to dot one, 
starts putting the pen down, then starts drawing a line as it goes to dot two. So that'll draw a line between dot one and dot two. And then after that, we're going to have it lift up the pen so it stops drawing. So let's check this out. Let's click on the green flag to test this. Hey, that's great. You can see it's going really fast, but each time it's looping through this forever loop, the drawing dot, which you can barely even see, in fact, you can't even see dot one and dot two very well, goes to the first dot and then just draws a line to the second dot. And that's all drawing dot, uh, drawing dot does. It's just that dot one and dot two are also moving around the screen, so you get this animated line drawing effect. That's pretty nice. Although there's kind of a problem where even whenever we start uh, clicking on the green flag to start the program, it's going to keep drawing over everything that's been already drawn. So we want to clear that. So go ahead and grab this clear block and put it right after when green flag clicked, but not inside the forever loop. This way it'll only run once at the very beginning of the program when we click on the green flag. Oh, that's nice. And then we click stop. And when we click on the green flag, it starts over. That's pretty nice. This is kind of boring just having that shade of blue. Let's grab this uh, change pen color by 10. That's kind of nice. Let's just change this by one for now and see how that looks. And click on the green flag. And that's nice. You can see it's slowly changing its color through uh, one shade at a time. So let's click on the stop sign. Let's see what it looks like when we have it at 10 again. So, oh wow, the color changes a lot faster now. I mean, the dots are still moving in the same general direction. Oh, that's kind of weird. Why is that dot not moving? Maybe we have a problem with our code. If on edge bounce, if on edge bounce. Oh, that must be a weird scratch issue. Let me see if I can... Oh, I guess that was just a weird scratch bug. Let's go back to the drawing dot. So this is kind of nice. These these are really skinny lines though, so let's grab that set pen size block. It's at the very bottom of the turquoise pen section. Let's make this slightly thicker lines. Let's say six instead of one. Oh, that's pretty nice. Yeah. This, you know, uh, this is kind of nice, but you can see after a while it'll start filling up the screen, especially if you click if you shift click on the green flag and you can run the program in turbo mode oh yeah so your program will start looking like that after a while let's shift click on the green flag to stop turbo mode yeah so that's I don't know maybe you like that let's try to come up with a solution for that so that just clears it like every few seconds so we can go to the brown event section and grab another one of these when green flag clicked and another forever loop from the orange control section and let's just have it, you know, wait maybe six seconds and then clear the screen. So grab this wait block. Let's change this to six. And then go back to the pen category and grab that clear block right here. Both of these scripts right here are going to be running at the same time when we start the program by clicking on the green flag. It's just that this script is handling all the drawing and this script, all it does is just wait six seconds and then clears it and then it goes back to waiting six seconds. So when we click on the green flag, you can see it's drawing and drawing and drawing, and every six seconds, this clear block will run. So that's kind of nice. Uh, this white background is kind of boring also. Let's fix that. Go ahead and click on Stage, and then click on the Backdrops tab. And Scratch comes with a pretty nice backdrop that we can use. We can find it by clicking on this scenery picture that says Choose Backdrop from Library. And this will be one of the space backdrops. Yeah, stars. So select that and click OK. Oh, that's pretty nice. Yeah. Yeah, you can't even really see the black dots now because they blend in with the space background. So that's pretty cool. Let's try and make this a little bit more complicated, though. Instead of two dots, wait with me, let's have three dots. So I'm going to duplicate dot two, and now it's dot three. And its code is the same. It's just moving around, bouncing off the walls. Let's go back to drawing dot, and let's have it go to dot one, draw a line to dot two, but then from dot two, draw another line to dot three. So let's have this move to dot three. Change this by clicking on the black triangle, select dot three. Hey, yeah, now we have this sort of 
rainbow space V just flying around. Hey, something even cooler, let's have it go back to dot one to form a triangle. So I'm gonna grab this go to block and change this back to dot one. Whoa, and now you have this giant triangle flying around. And you can just keep adding more dots and then drawing specific patterns. So if we had a fourth dot, we could draw a square that's flying around that keeps changing its shape. Or if we had five dots, you could make a pentagon. Or if you change the order that you draw it into, you could have a giant flying star even. I'll just leave that as an exercise for you to do. But this is pretty cool. This itself isn't really a game, but it's so few lines, uh, blocks of code, that you could easily just have this as a cool background for some other game, like maybe you have your players and monsters chasing each other in the middle part, or just any game at all, you can just have an interesting background going on in the... So yeah, that's the entire script. It's just a few lines of code and duplicating everything, and then the drawing.code just has two simple scripts, so... If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment in the comments section or send me an email, but thanks for watching.